Hey guys, what's up? Econ John here. Welcome to our second part in our eight part series on monopoly behavior. In this video, we're going to talk about special cases of monopoly behavior and some key comparative statics from the profit function. Let's go. So depending on the nature of the demand function our monopolistic firm is facing, the optimal price and quantity produced will vary based on the elasticity of demand. There are a couple of unique scenarios where we can take some computational shortcuts when solving for our profit maximizing price, P and quantity Y. These cases are when our monopolist is facing a linear demand curve, which is more common uh, than you think. And our second case is where our monopolist is facing a demand function, which has a constant elasticity. A firm that faces the following inverse demand, which is P as a function of Y is equal to A minus BY, where A and B are just constants, its revenue and marginal revenue will be given by the following equations. If our firm's costs are of the form uh, CY, right, where Y is a constant, we can derive the optimal P and Y by simply setting our marginal revenue equal to our marginal cost. So this result over here, it just means that costs are linear. This is much less of a messier solution since we do not need to compute our elasticity of demand for such values which would be the case when we're dealing with other sort of demand curves. In our second case, for the monopolist facing a constant elasticity of demand function of the form uh, y is equal to AP raised to the power of negative B, right? Again, here, this is not an inverse demand function. This is just a direct demand function. Uh, we know immediately, and it can be shown using our formula for elasticity, that this elasticity of demand is just equal to negative B, meaning that we're just pulling it from the exponent. Considering the same sort of cost function where we have CY and using our profit maximization condition for our monopolist, we go and we have the following result where we just set our marginal revenue equal to our marginal cost. Using a little bit of algebra, we go and we find uh, that our price is equal to C, right, which is our, you know, the technical term would go be our input price, right, or price of output all over 1 minus 1 over B. This is much more simpler to solve for because we already have information about our elasticity of demand from the exponent on this demand function. So in terms of just some key comparative statics and the rationale behind it, often we wish to understand how exactly our monopolist production and pricing will change based on the changes in costs and how that will affect market demand. Let's consider the simple case where our costs are linear, which is you know the following sort of cost function that we had before. And in this case, our profit maximization problem is the following, and our first order condition follows from that. Say we wish to know that from this cost function, how demand Y will change with respect to the firm's uh, price for output, right? This is dy dc. In this case, we are parameterizing our demand function, meaning that we're evaluating this demand function to be a function by output cost C. To find such a result, we simply take the derivative of our first order condition with respect to C. So from within this result, we go and we see it, um, this dy with respect to dc, because it just follows out from this sort of chain result. Um, this is really just another part of envelope theorem. Now, using this formula, we simply sub in our needed second order conditions from our profit function, and we go and we get the following, where our change in our output demanded or output produced, um, which is kind of the same sort of thing uh, when we're talking about a monopolist, with respect to our output cost is equal to negative one over two P prime plus Y times P doubled prime. This is a key result because we're able to understand how our demand responds for a monopolist using details of the profit function. If our inverse demand is linear, we know that our second derivative of our inverse demand is equal to zero. And thus we go and we have that this change, this derivative result is equal to one half, meaning that demand responds right by, by one half of that value with, with respect to cost. Um, for the case where our demand function is of constant elasticity, we go and we get that this derivative is equal to our elasticity of demand all over one plus our elasticity of demand. So I hope this video helps and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.